summer, Shirley and I went home to her fishing village of Imanic, Alaska to help her mom put away fish for this winter. It literally took us 48 hours to get there. It's quite a bit colder than Hawaii. The average daily temperature this summer is about 55 degrees. But before we continued on our way, we warmed up with some duck soup, some rippies and bingo, and of course some Eskimo ice cream, or a gudak. The next morning we were on our way again from Anchorage to St. Mary's on Raven Air. This time we were about 36 hours into our trip with only 6 hours of sea. It took us about 2 hours to get from Anchorage to St. Mary's. In St. Mary's we met up with Shirley's cousin Tasha. They gave us a ride on their brand new boat for the final leg of our trip from St. Mary's to Imana. It was about a three hour ride down the Yukon River to the village. And finally, after almost 48 hours of traveling by plane, by car, and by boat, we finally reached Imana. It was my first trip to the village and Shirley's first trip home in about eight years. And in case you couldn't tell, and Monica is only accessible by air or by boat. Imanica is located at the mouth of the Yukon River, about 10 miles inland from the Bering Sea. It's part of the Yukon Delta National Wildlife Refuge and home to about 815 residents, the majority of whom are native Alaskan Yupik. Most of the residents there practice a subsistence lifestyle and they hunt and gather most of their food. gets around the village either on foot or by four-wheeler and it doesn't matter what make or model your four-wheeler is they're all called Hondas Shirley's grandson Andrew Dean came to spend the week with us while we were there he packed up his harpoon his fishing poles he brought a gill net he had a rope, he had his pocket knife, can opener, nail clipper, a couple of nails, and his Legos. Unfortunately this year, there's hardly any salmon. This is largely in part due to the Alaskan trawlers and their bycatch, and also global warming. So while we were there, there was no subsistence fishing or commercial fishing because they need to let the salmon pass and head up the 2,000 mile long Yukon River so that other villages will have fish this winter. Fortunately, Fish and Game keeps a list of elders that they give away their fish to once they're done studying the fish that they've caught. So Shirley's mom was able to get a couple of king salmons. And Yukon King Salmon is the best salmon. Andrew also brought his first Nayak or seal that he caught to give to Shirley's mom. In Yupik culture, it's tradition to give your first catch to someone. It'll ensure many more Nayak to come. There are so many chores to do every day in the village, but the best part of our day was the end of the day when we got to Maki or take a steam bath. It's the traditional way that the Yupik bathed. 
It's two o'clock in the morning. Two a.m. It's totally lit. We're going to sleep. Good night. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like many native cultures, the Yupik were converted to Christianity by Catholic missionaries. And like many other native cultures today, they're reclaiming their space and their voice. In the morning, I get ready and I go hunting. Wow, cool, sir. I get ready and I take my spares and I clean them. Mm. And then it was finally time to do the job that we came to do, moving Shirley's mom's mumdagak or smokehouse. Every year, due to erosion, some of the riverbank falls into the river. So we needed to move the smokehouse back inland about 20 feet. We removed most of the walls and then propped it up on logs and tied a rope to it and we pulled it back 20 feet. <laughs> in a day's work. time our week was up and Shirley's cousin Randy was nice enough to give us a ride to drop off Andrew Dean at his home village of Alakanuk. It's about eight miles southwest of Imana. Love you! After we dropped off Andrew Dean at home, Randy took us out for a little excursion to the coast to see the Bering Sea. That right there is the Bering Sea. And that little island right there is where his dad's fish camp used to be. On our way back home from the coast, Randy spotted a nayuk and we chased it for a while, but no luck. Last but not least, we went to visit Shirley's grandparents, Flora and Camille Hooch. We brought them some forget-me-nots that we picked on the island near the coast earlier that day. The remainder of our time was spent visiting with Shirley's family and friends, most of whom still live in the village. <laughs> yay, yay.
just like that, our trip was over. It'll take us another four flights to get home. Too bad there wasn't any fish this year, but we did move the smokehouse like we intended. I wasn't quite sure how I'd like the village. Empties, a honey bucket, 3G, having to get there by small plane or boat, and not a hospital in sight in case of emergency. But I actually really enjoyed myself, and I can't wait to get back there next summer. Until then, we're on a chuck nut.